Today we're going to begin our unit on uh, U.S. and online shopping. So basically making purchases either in person in the United States or making purchases online, which could be from any other country, but in many cases will be either from Canada or the United States. In order to do that, we're going to have to know how to do unit conversions between currencies. The good news is we already know how to do unit conversions and currencies are just units that we can work with. So I'm going to start by just showing you that there are a whole bunch of different uh, conversions here. We have a whole bunch of different countries and their units of currency and what they are in most cases equivalent to the US dollar. I'm doing this partially for teaching purposes and partially because usually the world actually does compare its value of its money to the US dollar. Um, so this chart just shows a whole bunch of things all equivalent to US. Now I will point out that the uh, ones I'm using in this video are accurate as of March 26, 2022. Uh, depending on when you watch this video, things may have changed significantly. Um, over long periods of time, con uh, currencies do change a bit. And even over short periods of time, they can change quite a bit. Uh, so you, if you wanna actually know the real values, you can always look them up at the time. It's really easy to find online. But for now, we're just gonna use these values for our lesson and for our homework questions. So the first one is that a US dollar equals one US dollar. If you didn't know that already, you probably shouldn't be in math or breathing. But uh, like that one, other than that one, all the rest are, are kind of in flux constantly. So currently uh, Canada is doing pretty well. Uh, one US dollar gets us a dollar 25 Canadian or vice versa. Uh, it can fluctuate up as much as requiring about a dollar 40 to get one US dollar, a dollar 40 Canadian. So right now we're getting US dollars pretty cheap, uh, which is great if we want to go to the US, not so great if we're trying to um, um, sell our stuff to the US. And then we've got um, Europe, specifically the Euro, which is many countries in Europe actually. And a few of the ones on this list I pointed out are actually obsolete as of these days. I've got uh, the United Kingdom, which is basically Britain uh, and the Great Britain pound. Australian dollars, uh, Canada has dollars, US has dollars, Australia also uses dollars. We have Mexican pesos. And then we have a whole bunch here and uh, out of respect for the countries that I have down here, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the names of some of their currencies because I know I'm not gonna get it right. So we have um, currencies for Ukraine, Syria, Afghanistan, Japan, China, Russia, Poland, uh, Myanmar, or which is Burma, um, India, and then at the very bottom, I did want to point out here that I do have some for uh, Greece, Germany, and Italy, none of which are, are valid anymore. Those are all things that were replaced um, not that long ago within my lifetime with the, um, the Euro. So those currencies aren't used anymore, but historically they're fairly, fairly common currencies. So I thought I'd just to show you those uh, for interest sake, although they really don't come up much. And of course, there are many, many more currencies um, out there. I just tried to pick some significant ones so that we could do some examples and have some things to choose from. So moving along, I will get you to refer back to the, the title page in your notes. Um, I'm gonna try not to flip back and forth too much because it's um, it makes people dizzy in the videos when I start flicking the screen all over the place but you can refer back to your uh, title page for the, the various different currencies that we need for each question. So for example one, a couple living in Canada wants a friend living in England to bring them a tea set from England. The cost of the set is 170 uh, Great British pounds. How much does the couple owe their friend? And we're going to assume that they're going to pay them in Canadian dollars. Okay, so we set this up like any other unit conversion. We know we have 170 Great British Pounds or GBP, and we wanna convert that into Canadian. So now I'm gonna go uh, GBP, and you'll notice that there is no direct equivalency in Canadian. We're gonna go through US dollars to get there. And then go to Canadian dollars or abbreviated, that's just CAD. So 170 GBP, we have two units to convert through, so we'll do two fractions there. 
and we're going to put uh, GBP USD Canadian on the top and then GBP USD on the bottom. Now, if we look back at our title page, we can see that um, the con currency conversion between Great British pounds and US dollars is that one US dollar is equal to 0 0.76 British pounds. And that the relationship between Canada and the US is that one US dollar is a buck 25 Canadian. So now we cancel out like units, GBP on the top, USD on the bottom. And what we're left with is the only unit left is Canadian, and it's going to be 170 times 1 times 1.25. And there's only one number on the bottom, so I'm just going to divide by 0.76. So multiply the tops, divide the bottoms. And that gives us 279.61 when we round off Canadian dollars. So that's how much we owe our friend. Question two. After visiting Canada, the friend also plans on visiting Japan for a while. If her friend in Japan would also like one of the tea sets, how many yen will the Japanese friend owe her? So very similar. We're going to start off with Great British Pounds, GBP. We're going to go to US dollars, and then we're going to go to yen. Uh, sorry, just to be really specific, the yen that we're going to is abbreviated GPY. So let me actually write that out properly. Sorry, JPY. Did I say GP? JPY, Japanese yen. Okay, so very similar to last time. 170 Great British Pounds, two fractions. And we put GBP, US dollars, Japanese yen on the top. And then on the bottom, Great British Pounds, and uh, US dollars. So now the first conversion is going to be the same because we're still going from US. One US is 0 0.67 pounds. And then we look up on our chart under Japan and see that one US dollar is equal to 122 yen. So that's actually a lot of yen for one dollar. So it turns out Japanese yen is kind of more like our penny than our dollar. Well, our one cent unit, I guess, than a penny since they don't exist anymore, but uh, a yen is about a, a cent in Canadian. Okay, so now that we do this, everything cancels out except for the Japanese yen on the top. And on the top, we do 170 times 122, and then divide by 0.67. And we get out 30,000. 955 Japanese yen. Okay. Question three. An Indian man is on vacation in Mexico. He sees a beautiful necklace and he'd like to buy it for his daughter. The price is 450 pesos. How many rupees will it cost him to buy the necklace? So what we're going to send up with here is we're going to start off with uh, Indian rupees, which is INR. Our relationship gives us US dollars, so we got to go through there, unfortunately. And then we're going to end up with pesos, and the short form for that is uh, MXN. Oh, now we got to be careful here. Um, I made a mistake that actually most, most students made, so at least I'll point it out so that we don't make it again. Looking at this more carefully, we know how many pesos it is. We want to know how much it's going to cost him in, uh, in rupees, so we actually want to do this the other way around. We want it to go from Mexican to U.S. to Indian rupees. So we want to make sure that our order is correct. If we get it backwards, it's not a big deal. We can just write it out correctly when we're doing it. But we are going to start with 450 Mexican pesos. We're going to go through two more conversions there, so two fractions. And the top is going to be MXN, USD, INR. And on the bottom, 
MXN USD. So now I look at my sheet, and my sheet says that uh, one US dollar is 20.0 Mexican pesos. And uh, one US dollar as well is equal to uh, 76.3 Indian rubies. Okay, so on the top, oh, actually, we'll cancel out Mexican, cancel out USD. And on the top of this, we have 450 times 1 times 76.3. And then we'll divide by 20. And that leaves us with 1716.75. Indian rupees. Sorry, Indian rupees. I gotta pronounce that correctly. They're not rubies. Rubies are gems. Rupees are currency. Okay. Um, so now just to put this in perspective, what would that necklace cost in Canadian dollars? Because when you see it in Mexican, you see it in, in uh, rupees, I, I don't, neither of those really means much to me. But if I want to convert this into Canadian dollars, then what I could do is take 450 Mexican, Mexican to US, US to Canadian. And we already saw one US is 20 Mexican, and we also know that one US is a buck 25 Canadian. Cancel out what we can, and we're left with 450 times 1.25 divided by 20 equals about $28.13. Okay, so it's like a $30 necklace. Cool. Question four. Two friends are meeting for lunch. One is Syrian and has 30,000 pounds. Now, there are several currencies called pounds, but since this person is Syrian, we're going to assume that it's Syrian pounds. Makes sense, right? The other is from Af or the other is Afghan and has uh, 1,200 1, Afghanis, which is the name of the Afghanistan currency. So who has more money? So we have a couple of options here. Um, we can convert one of these to the other, and we can go either direction, it doesn't matter. Uh, we could convert both of these to the same currency, like US, which is actually probably easier. Um, but as long as we have some way to compare like currencies to like currencies, we're okay. Now, in this case, um, why don't we convert 30,000 Syrian pounds into Afghanis and see if that person has, that the Syrian has more or less Afghanis equivalent? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the 30,000 Syrian pounds, and that would be SYP. And then we're going to put that to US dollars, and then we're going to put that to the uh, Afghan Afghanis, which is AFN. And then from there, let's just do the conversion. So 30,000 pounds, or 30,000 SYPs, two fractions to go, uh, SYP, USD, AFN, and then SYP, USD, and once everything cancels, we should get Afghani, Afghans. Okay, so the equivalency here for Syrian pounds is that one US dollar is equal to 2,513 Syrian pounds. Uh, from there, one US dollar is equal to 88.1 Afghan Afghanis. So if we cancel out the SYP and the USD, we'll take the tops, multiply 30,000 times 1 times 88.1, divide by the bottom 2513, and we're left with 1,051.73 Afghan Afghanis. 
So the Syrian has that many Afghan Afghani, Afghani equivalents. Um, the person from Afghanistan has 1,200 Afghanis. So the person from Afghan Afghanistan has more money. So the Afghan has more money. There we go. We've answered the question. Now, likewise, we could have converted the Afghanis into Syrian pounds. And what we would have gotten was that he would have had a little more than 30,000 Syrian pounds. Or we could have converted them both to US or Canadian or any other currency for that matter and compared them there. And no matter what we did, we'd find out that the Afghan has slightly more money. Uh, how many times more money do they have? Okay, this isn't a unit conversion. This is just saying, does he have twice as much? Does he have one and a half times as much? And the way to do that is actually just to do a quick division. Um, the Afghan has 1,200 units. The Syrian has 1051.73. Just do that quick division. 1200 divided by 1051.73 gives us 1.14 approximately times as much. And since we're masters of percent, we could also say they have 114% as much. And that's about it. All right, from there, try a few of these practice problems, doing unit conversions from some unit to some other unit. A few of these questions will introduce new units that aren't on your title page, uh, that aren't on the, the list of the ones you've already gotten. And at the bottom, you've got a couple, um, a couple of currency, or the answers there, the answers are all rounded off, much like our currency conversion problems. If, you're, if you do the wrong setup of your currency conversion, you're going to get drastically different answers, not slightly different answers. So if, if you're getting anywhere close to these numbers, you're doing just fine. If you have trouble, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next lesson.